All the marketing and the advertising in the world is wasted if you don't provide a convenient, comfortable way for people to get exactly what they want when they land on your website. If you're wondering what that looks like, just go to Amazon. Today we're gonna to be talking about on-site search intent. When people visit your website, they are in different mindsets. They might be visiting for the first time, they might be a repeat visitor, they might know exactly what they want, they might have no idea what they want. And understanding on-site search intent and what to do to facilitate whatever that intent is, is what we're gonna talk about in this video today. Things like making sure that there's a search bar and that it's delivering the right information of what somebody's searching for. Filters and categor categorizing topics. These things are so important, but often overlooked by a lot of companies because they just use a template. They download a WordPress template, or if you're e-commerce, you download a Shopify template, and you just sort of use whatever they offer. But make sure you understand the on-site search intent first of your visitors and your customers so that you're making educated decisions on what templates to choose, what apps to choose, what integrations to build into your website, and what user experience you should be offering. Those are all the things we're gonna cover in this video today, so keep watching. Hey everyone, I'm John Timmerman, founder and CEO of Good Monster and chairman of Good Brands and Management. Thanks for watching today's show. Today we're gonna to talk about on-site search intent. Now this term might be new to you, but in the SEO and website design world, this is super common. And uh, yes, we're a little bit biased, but it's one of the more overlooked things uh, in, in what's probably one of the more important aspects of your website. And it's involved in the user experience and customer experience conversation. Now let's start with a little bit of, of, of a story, story time, if you will. I want you to close your eyes for a minute and just imagine. This is gonna be very short, okay? I want you to pic picture a time when you've been on your phone, you've been searching for something, or you've been on social media or LinkedIn or whatever, and somebody says, like, check this website out. Uh, or you go to Google and you're searching for something that um, you're looking for a replacement part. You click on a website and you get there. You're like, okay, I'm on the website. How do I find the thing that I'm looking for? You go up to the menu, you click the little hamburger menu, the little three lines, drop down comes down and it's got all the options a normal website has. About us, our products, um, you know, our story, uh, blog, news, press, contact. You're like, okay, uh, let's try products. Let's see what products they have. Click on products and there's about a thousand products that come up. And then there's like a little filter button, but you can't really find it on a phone. It's up in the upper right hand corner. It looks like a little funnel but you don't recognize it at first. So you're just clicking around the products and you're like, how do I find the replacement parts for my water filter? I don't know. Uh, do water filters have a replacement parts? I don't even know. Uh, that is a replacement part, actually, a water filter. So <laughs> furnace, replacement parts. Okay, so you get frustrated and you're like, I don't know where these things are. I'm just gonna go back to Google. Boom, gone. This is known as bounce rate. The bounce rate on a website that's above 50% is pretty bad. And that means people are leaving your website. That means they will not convert into a customer or a lead, okay? So you need to make sure that your on-site experience facilitates many different kinds of people coming to your site. And this is what on-site search optimization or on-site search intent, understanding on-site search intent, renovate your website to get it to a place where it can accommodate many different types of uh, users, visitors, and people, potential customers, with many different types of intent. So let's start with what are those intents? So there's generally three different kinds of intent that somebody has when visiting a website. The first one is navigational. Okay, they're getting there uh, and they, they uh, know what they're looking for, um, but they want an answer to that specific question. So one really simple example is when you go to Google and you try to find directions to a place that you're looking for, or you try to find a phone number to a place that you're looking for, or you try to find a menu of a restaurant, right? You, you don't know, you know what you're looking for, but you don't know what the thing is, okay? So you're looking for the thing. So that's navigational. You're looking for directions, essentially. Uh, the next type is informational. 
And this is, you're just looking for general information. This is why you go to a news website. This is why you go maybe to an industry website that has articles and blog posts about trends. Um, this is why you go to maybe like, uh, uh, statista.com. It's a statistics website. You know, you, you're looking for information on uh, a particular t topic or something like that. Right. Uh, and then the other one's purchase. Somebody's looking to actually make a purchase. This is why people go to Amazon. Now these different intents blend. Sometimes you're, you have both intents. Sometimes you're navigational and informational. Sometimes you're informational and purchase. You're looking to purchase a particular product, but you're looking for information first before you purchase the product. But these are generally the three buckets of intent that you need to make sure you have covered on your website. And one of the easiest ways, well, let me back up there. Cause there's not one way. There's several ways, which I'm going to talk about in this video. Uh, but generally the way you're going to do this is to make everything discoverable in a very easy way. If you have products, make sure your products are filtered so that somebody can just search or go down the categories to select them when they want. If you have information like blog posts, make sure your categories uh, are very easy to click through or drop down, or you have a search bar where somebody can search a particular topic and you have all your blog posts and your articles tagged appropriately so the right information shows up. And uh, if, if their goal is navigational, you need to make sure that all of that information is very readily available. Uh, also, even if it's not on your website, if you're a restaurant or somebody, a, a local company, then make sure that your information is loaded into Google listing because people oftentimes won't click past the Google listing to find instruct, to, to find directions to your location or your menu or your phone number or whatever, you know, that is, they won't go to your website. If you don't have it in your Google listing, they're just going to go down to the next one that does. So make sure that that information, if, if you have a large navigational intent audience, make sure your Google listing is filled out appropriately. Okay. So let's look at some of the benefits of paying attention to on-site search intent and some of the things you can do with that knowledge when armed with that, that knowledge. One of the things that you need to pay attention to is when somebody comes to your website, they're going to be looking, right? They got there. Now what's the next thing? So one of the most basic things you can do is to add a search bar into the upper right hand corner of your website. And on a phone, it's on the upper right hand corner. Maybe it's a little magnifying glass, but this is so common and natural for people. So they expect it's going to be there already. Make sure it looks good. Make sure it's clean. It fits nicely and it's easy to type information into. Okay. That's step one. Step two is to make sure that you have some program in there or app in there that is auto, it has auto complete because people have fat thumbs. I have fat thumbs. It means I type when they're typing it in, have auto complete. So if they start typing the word chapstick and they go chap, it should auto complete to stick and they can just tap their thumb and it will complete the word. It, a lot of times it's going to be longer tail than just chapstick, right? So best chapstick for dry lips in the winter. So you can actually build these long tail searches into a database and it will recognize what they're typing and then finish it with that thing that you've typed in. So, so this is a good amount of work and, uh, somebody's going to have to code these things in or write these things in rather. Uh, but doing so will allow the customer experience to happen so much more seamlessly when they're searching for, for items on your website. So you have the search bar, you have the auto complete also, uh, account for any errors. So if they type chapstick, but they type chat stick with a T, you're going to want to account for some of these grammatical errors and still show results uh, when they click search that are relevant to chapstick. Again, a little bit more work. You're going to have to write these things in that could be misspelled. Um, you know, uh, but you want the right search results to come up because the worst thing that can happen is somebody types in chat stick. They didn't realize they put a T instead of a P and then it says zero results because what they're going to think is that you don't have chapstick. They, for, they, they didn't see that they typed in chat stick. And if it says, sorry, uh, your search resulted in zero results, they're going to think, Oh crap, there's no chapstick here. I'm going to go to a website that does. Okay. So those are some of the most basic things is to make sure your search bar is in a good place and that it has the experience that people will expect. Some of the more common, another common way to have a search is to have a live chat bot. 
uh, not a person, although having a person is great, is great for customer service and questions. Having a chat bot is a very natural, convenient way as well, and that'll often pop up from the bottom right. So you can have your search bar up in the upper right and a chat kind of pop up in the bottom right. And the chat pops up and says, what can I help you find today? Enter your query in the space below. And then somebody can say, oh, I'm looking for a chapstick. They type it in and then the bot Again, you have to build all this information in there. You have to have somebody enter these information into the live chatbot so that it knows what to say. But then the chatbot will say, oh, great. Maybe you're looking for this article about how to cure chapped lips in the winter, or are you looking for this particular product? And it will actually pull those up so that somebody can just click on them and go right to those things, depending on what they're looking for. So this is one of the most basic things to do on any website now that has more than one product or one specific service. And especially if it is a deep website and it has many pages and many layers and many products or categories. Mm -hmm. So these two areas are, are a great place to start. Next, let's take a look at the menu. So your website's menu, you start, if you're on a phone, it has the three little uh, hamburger menu, the three little lines, somebody clicks on that. So I wanna use an example of a company that I love. Uh, and they're, Noble is the name of the company, not to confuse with my company, Noble, that does events, but Noble, they make shoes. They started in the CrossFit space and now they're huge. It's, they were just valued at $500 million. Uh, so look them up, no bull shoes. Uh, I love the company. I love the product. It's an amazing brand, but their website annoys me because you have to click four or five times to get to the actual product that I want. So when you go to the menu, you click the hamburger menu, it'll have a drop down. And I'm paraphrasing here, um, but I have done it enough times that I think I'm close. You, you have a drop down and then it says, uh, you can click shoes, right? You can click the category shoes. And then another menu comes down and you can click men's or women's. You click men's and then it will show the style. Do you want trainers? Do you want lifters? Do you want runners? And then I click, you know, trainers. And then it says, do I want the old trainers or the new trainer? So many different levels and categories to keep clicking in. Uh, so that's one example. Then you use another example like Amazon. You go to Amazon and you click their menu and it breaks it down into categories. Again, you click shoes and you click shoes and then it shows you all the options for shoes, uh, categories like men's and women's and styles. It shows it all on one area. So you can search for specifically what you want. I want men's shoes and then it'll show you all the men's shoes or I want men's shoes and sports, you know, athletic shoes. It'll show you all the men's athletic shoes. So it's better, in my opinion, to use the filter versus the mega menu. The mega menu is what no bull uses where you have to click and select category and then subcategory and subcategory and subcategory. A better option is to filter right away. So you start with one piece of information, men's or women's. And then from there, it will open up a filter that says, okay, you want men's. What kind of men's do you want? What color? What da, da, da. And you select all the options. And then it just shows you the shoes based on all those options you select. So this is another way to use the on-site search intent, uh, you know, research that you've done to make educated decisions about how your customers can get to what they want quickest. In my opinion, the filter will allow people to get it in less clicks because it sort of allows them to order what they want to show up on the screen. Something else that on-site search intent can do is it can help educate you about if your marketing efforts are working uh, because you will know what people want when they come in. If they come in knowing nothing and they have no idea what they want, maybe your marketing hasn't done a good enough job. But if they come in and the first thing that they do is buy a product and that's the majority of the people coming to your website, you know your marketing is doing just fine. So using the on-site search data is a great way to go back and measure, is my SEO pulling in the right people? Is my PPC prepping people to make a purchase quick enough? Um, you know, are our brand campaigns positioning our brand in the, in the right way? So this is a great use of on-site search data. Something else to consider when uh, thinking about your on-site search intent and the uh, people that are coming in is that you need to make your website visual especially if you have products. So if you go to Amazon, you'll notice that, that the thing that you see on every single listing is a image of the product with a white background. And that is very on purpose. In fact, Amazon requires that all vendors or sellers selling and listing a product 
the first thing that they do is have a very clear picture of their product all by itself with a white background. They don't want other uh, distra- they don't want any other distractions or marketing or uh, colors or things like that distracting people from seeing exactly what the product is. So one of the best things that you can do is have a very clear picture of your product, 360 degrees if you can, and then add a video that also can show that product in everyday life or use. And this helps to uh, educate people about the product. It helps people make a purchase or evaluate to make a purchase. Uh, if they're already thinking about making it, they can see any of the last little minute things that they you want to analyze on the product before they make a purchase. So uh, make sure that your pictures are clear. You have enough of them, but not too many. You don't want 30 different products in most cases. Uh, pictures, I'm sorry. You don't want 30 different pictures. I would suggest maybe five to eight pictures and one or two videos. That will give people enough information visually that they need to make a decision on whether uh, it is worth the purchase or engagement or not. Uh, Another thing that can be used to encourage people to make a purchase or engage a little bit more uh, for those people that are have do have a purchase intent or even people that are in the navigational or informational intent stages and visit your website is to have reviews, have lots of reviews because lots of five-star reviews will set, will tell anybody, no matter their intent, that this is a great product. People love it. So if they have a purchase intent, those reviews might get them to clicking the buy button a lot quicker. If they have navigational, they're looking for uh, phone numbers or uh, they're looking for directions to your store. Seeing five-star reviews on your top-selling product might get them to say, you know what? When I go there, I'm actually going to pick one of those up too. I'm going to pick one of these up because they have such good reviews. And if they have informational intent, they're looking for information on how to clean their windows effectively. And there's a product on there with 150 five-star reviews. It might, they, it might make them think I should buy this product if I'm going to clean my windows anyways. Right? So reviews are a great way to funnel every type of intent into potentially buying a product or at least thinking about buying a product. Okay, so that's a little bit about on-site search intent. Again, it's when people visit your website, what is their intent? What are they looking for? It's your job to now create a comfortable, convenient environment for them to get to the answers of what they're looking for as quickly and easy as possible. That's what on-site search optimization is. And that's what the information from studying on-site search intent can give you. And I want to leave you with one final little tip. There's this thing called bounce rate. Um, I mentioned it earlier in the video. Bounce rate is the rate that people bounce off of your website or off of a web page. If your bounce rate is over 50%, you've got work to do. That means if half the people are hitting a page and then immediately leaving without any other action, That means that they're not happy with where they just landed. And that means you need to provide more information. There's lots of ways to decrease the bounce rate, but one of them is to make sure that they can get the answers very quickly, providing really easy ways to search, providing really easy ways to filter and categorize exactly what they want, and finding really easy ways for them to filter and categorize the information uh, that they want is one of the best ways to reduce that bounce rate. If you found this video valuable, make sure you subscribe. On this channel, I talk all about business and commerce and everything in between. Uh, Very open to suggestions on topics or guests or uh, things that you want me to talk about on this channel. So please leave comments on any of the videos that you watch. Forward this to a friend, and I'll see you in the next video.